All right, good morning, everybody. Um, so let's uh, let's open up our let's open up our packets and let's find the semester one review. I left it in my Yep. Why don't you flip the lights off on the way out, too, please? Thank you. Okay, so our semester one review. I would say everything that is in this review is eligible to be on the exam. Can I tell you what's on the exam? Anything in here is eligible to be on it. Okay, are there things in here that won't be on the exam? Yes. Which are it? Which is it? Won't tell you. Okay, so um, yeah, it's in your workbook. It's after chapter five. So what? You? No. Eugene, maybe. Oh. All right. I have a sneeze that's been working its way out, and it's coming. There it goes. Close is coming. All right. Um. So problem one, two, three, four, five. Name three collinear points. So we have. Hang on. Don't start shouting it out. Why don't you try it as I try to draw it up here? Why don't you try the collinear point one? See how you do. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is ugly. I didn't make it work. What? I did what? You wanna you wanna go watch part three with me? I did. Oh my god. No one asked you, Sam. Go watch Cars. What? Cars. Cars. Wait, Everything changes. Wait, what does it mean? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Only if I get popcorn. Oh. oh my All right. Shh. Ew. Yuck. And I got some line that does this, right? <laughs> Holy cow. All right. <laughs> what were collinear points? Lines that are on the same? Line. 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 No, same line. line. Same line. So, collinear points. You could have LEG. You could have LEG and J, any combination of those three. You could have FGB, any combination in whatever order. Well, you know, in order of somehow. You could have, so we want three. We could have ADE. We could have HD and I. Or is it L? So any of the ones that are, any of the points that are following along, any of the points that are doing this or this, anything like that, you want to find three of them in a row. So you want to, so do you need, do you need uh, three points to create a line or define a line? The answer is no, you only need two, so they're asking you to have triplets. And then name three non-collinear points. You could do K, C, and A. You know K and C are on the same line, and then A is obviously not, or K, C, and B, or K, C, and G, or K, C, and I, or K, C, and H, or K, C, and J, or K, C, and L, or F, G. Yeah. KFC. I bet you we can make KFC work. K. No, oh, there is an F. F. Okay. K, F, and C definitely works. Because K and F would be on the same line, or F and C on the same line, or C and F would be on the same line, but they're not all collinear. Okay. Uh, give the intersections of a plane and a plane. Where two planes intersect, what do I have? It's a line, so it's line GD or DG, however, whatever order you want to put that in. 
And then give the intersection of plane HDG, which is that's a straight up and down one, and line CK. What's the intersection? K. Yeah, the intersection of, uh, unless the line is laying on the plane, the line will go through the plane in one point, so it's the same as some point. Yeah. Three. Non coplanar points. Oh, coplanar points. So you could do L H I J. You could do F E A B. You could do D G B A D G F E G L H D D G J I. So any four that are on the same plane. Name four coplanar points. That's what you're saying. Oh, non coplanar. Oh. Those are the coplanar ones. So I would pick three that are on the plane and then one that's not. So if you were to pick like H, L, J, and then A is like so far off. All right. Why don't you all try and work on six and seven. See how you did. Six and seven. Try six and seven. See how you do. Try six and seven. See how you do. You waiting there? Yeah. I'm not getting that much time to do it. Let me see. Let me see. So, guys and girls, when you ask, what are we doing for the review? You're looking at it. So, when you come to me and say, well, what else can I do for the review? I'd say, one, pay attention. Just because there's some people that don't pay attention. I'm not mentioning any names. Sawyer's exempt from anything today. He gave me a Twix. He's like, it's all dirty, and then I'm like, ready? Set. Here we go. Shh. All right. So they tell us that segment AB is 3x minus 10. And then they tell us uh, BC is 2x plus 1. And then they tell us the entire distance A to C is a length of 4x. Okay, how are we going to do this problem? Segment addition postulate, correct? So 3x minus 10 plus 2x plus 1 equals 4x, agree? Let's get x by itself. So I get 5x minus 9 equals 4x. Subtract 5x. So x is equal to 9. And we finish the problem. Uh, then we want to know how long AC is. Well, AC is 4x. So if I plug 9 in right there, I find that AC is equal to 36 in length. 36 units. Problem 7 is angle addition postulate. Agreed? So they tell us that XC bisects WXY. So if it bisects it, what do you know about the two angles? It's half or they're both equal. So W, X, Z is 5X minus 10. And then W, X, Y, W, X, Y is the whole thing. So the whole thing is what? 55 plus 5X. And then what else do we know? W... Okay, so I know that this has to be this because it bisects, agree? Which gives me 10x minus 20 equals 55 plus 5x. Subtract 5x, so I get 5x over here. Add 20, so I get 75. So x is equal to 15. Okay? 
guys are back. You're goofing around too much. If you don't want to be here for the review, I have no qualms if mommy calls you in and gives you an extended lunch. But I'm not going to have you take away from the review of everyone else. That's a, that's a very subtle warning. I understand, Sawyer. You can always move up to this chair up here. <laughs> WXY, WXY, WXY. So if we're going to find the whole angle, if we know that X is 15, if I know the whole angle is this, then I can plug it in here. So 55 plus 5 times 15. So 55 plus 75. Uh, coming out, 130 degrees. Is that right? Did I do my math right? I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay, number eight. Angle A is obtuse. If angle A is x plus 20, then find the limits of x. A lot of people struggled with this last time. Right? Okay, so if it's obtuse, what you, can you tell me about an obtuse angle? Yeah, so it's going to fall between 90 and 180 degrees. Still with me? Yeah. So this is our obtuse. Okay? So they tell us angle A is obtuse, and then they tell us that angle A is equal to what? So how should we set up the limits? Yeah, there's two different problems, right? So x plus 20 has to be greater than 90. What's my other one I'm going to set up? Yeah, x plus 20. What happened back there, guys? <laughs> All right. Johnny, you can no longer bring coffee to class. It's a good thing it's not McDonald's. You would have, like, burned things. I know. Then you would have had a lawsuit. It would have been great. All right. So what does this tell you? It says that we can plug in 70.0 forever, okay, because we want greater than 70. So it only has to be a smidge bigger than 70, and then it has to be smaller than 160. Those are our limits. These are the limits for our thing. We could, I guess, set it up to look like this. Okay, this is kind of the official math thing to do, like that. How is the answer going to be presented on the test? If it was written, I would take either answer. If it was a multiple choice part, this would be the only multiple choice there. Yeah. Does the test teach it multiple choice? No. Oh, oh, no. no. Oh. Big Sorry. So we'll start part of it on Monday, and then. Wednesday and Thursday we is this test on Thursday? Yeah, I can't remember. Like our last one. Yeah. Wait, so there's five on it. Is it it goes seven then five? Is that what it is? Uh, five for reduction and seven then five. Five so we have like the I'm just gonna hide. You guys don't come to me. You get the kid who's never come in once come in. I need to go over this whole thing in twenty minutes. So yeah. All right. Find the complement of supplement of each. Okay, complements how much? Has to add up to 90. Supplements how much? 180. There you go. So what is, if I have 60 degrees, 30 is the complement, right? What's the supplement? 120 is a supplement. Get it? Do I have to write them out or you guys okay with S and C? It's 180 Yeah. And then I have X plus 10. So how do I find, shh, how do I find the complement? How do I find the complement of this? Go ahead. For a complement, you would do 90. It's actually this, like that, which distribute the negative, right? So I get 80 minus x. That's the complement of that. 
Does that make sense? So the supplement, in order to find the supplement, what do I do? 90 minus what? So x minus, oh, that's a 180, thank you. 180 minus x plus 10. So that then falls to, uh, what is that, 170 minus x? So that's the supplement. Good? Johnny, did you get everything cleaned up? Yeah. Good. Did you burn yourself? No, we did. Did you burn anyone around you? No. That's always funny. Oh, yeah. so all right. May. Look, we've just we've been killing for this. It's all beginning stuff. All right, ten. The supplement. Shh. The supplement is forty more than six times the complement. Find the angle. Woo! That's one. That's one of our favorites. Let me write it out. It says the supplement of an angle. Is 40 more? What? Is it 20? It's 40 more than. Times the complement. All right, so. How do I write the supplement of an angle? Good. 180 minus x. So this right here is going to be 180 minus x. How do I write the, comp the complement of an angle? So that's 90 minus x. Still with me? OK, so the supplement of an angle, 180 minus x, is equals 40 more, 40 more than 6 times the complement. Is that right how I did it? Yeah. All right, so I don't have to distribute over here. We're OK. It comes out to 20. Is that the back says? Or did you work it out? No, I just. Is that 540 minus 6x? Did I do that right? All right. Uh, 580. I'm going to add 6x over here, so I get 180 plus 5x. Is that okay? Did I do the math okay? Yeah. Subtract that 180. And then divide everything by 5, so. What? 80? 80? 80? What did the answer say 20? The answer is 80? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, okay. You were scaring me because I got 20. I'm like, oh, shoot. What did I goof up on? It's only been three months since I popped this, so I might have forgotten. All right. How we doing? All right. So number 11. Number 11. We're dealing, number 11 is all vertical angles, yes? And then the, the angles next to it were supplementary or linear pair. So we got 111. And then what's this one over here? Uh, what? 2x plus 3y. 2x plus 3y. What's down here? And then 3x plus 5y? Uh, no, 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 no. 3x plus 5y is on the bottom. This yeah. is down here? Yeah, it's 69. Okay. That's gone, right? Yeah. And that's gone. Is that right, right? Are we good? Yeah. Okay, hang on. So, which way should we go about doing this problem? Could I set 2x plus 3y equals 69 and 3x plus 5y equals 111? Or should I go 111 plus 2x plus 3y equals 180, 3x plus 5y plus 69 equals 180? Don't waste the time. Okay, you like the vertical angles? I'll go with the vertical angles as well. I like it as well. So, we can say that because vertical angles work, and then we have this. Okay, 
Can I add these together and get rid of a letter? No. I can? No. I get 5x plus 8y equals 180, right? That didn't work. What should I do? 2x plus 3y plus 3x plus 5x is 8. That does not going to help me. Oh, multiply. Yeah, no. Multiply. Multiply. Right. Multiply. Right. multiply. So I'm going to multiply. What would you like? First off, what letter would you like to get rid of first? Y. X, okay? So the smallest number that X has in common, one of them has to be negative, right? So make a negative 3 on top and a positive 2 on bottom. If I made this negative down here and that positive, it's still going to work the same. Okay, so distribute on top. So I get negative 6X minus 9Y equals negative. Help me out. I don't know what. 198, no, 207. 207? 207. 207? 207? Yes. Yeah. Thanks, man. All right, and then distribute the 2. So I get 6x plus 10y equals 222. Two, two, two. Now if I add these together, these are gone. That gives me 1y, which is y. And that gives me what? That's 1. All right. What do I have to do to get my x value now? I'll get back in. Yeah, I'm going to take this 15, I'll plug it back into either here or here, doesn't matter which one. I'll pick the top one. So I get 2x plus 3 times 15 equals 69, yes? Yes. 2x, what's that? Multiply together. 45. 45, thank you. Equals 69. Subtract 45. If I subtract 45, 69 minus 45, I get? 24. Is that right? So x is equal to 12. So... If you had your answer circled like this on the page, if this is the written part, fantastic. This is, if this is part of the um, multiple choice portion, they would probably have the answer like this. Which answer am I looking for? If it's unwritten, you can have the X and the Y's just circled or you know somewhere on your page. If it's on the multiple choice, they're going to put it together as a point. point. Does that make sense? Yeah. How many questions do you want to go through? Could. Nice. Maybe. Friday morning. Green. Purple. How many questions does this have? Yellow. All right. Blue. Go ahead. No, I don't know. You could, for the systems of equations, you could have just made them both positive and then subtracted it. Like, instead of doing negative 3, you could have done something positive. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yes, that would be Yeah. What did I do? What? She's got like a 99% here. She don't have time to mess around with stuff. All right. How we doing? How we doing? All right, we made it through page one of review. All right. Made it through page one of review. I can make it through page two, but I want to give you a little life story before I do that. Is that all right? Yes. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. This won't take long for those of you going, oh my gosh. All right. So, the year, 1984. No, well, kind of. You guys with me on this? Shh. The year is 1984. So, you guys, you guys and girls have probably grown up with like some sort of zip lines in your life. Yes? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And, and you can do the ones that you're up in the mountains, they cost you, and, you, and they got, they're everywhere. Well, we didn't grow up with zip lines. We, uh, we grew up climbing these big old trees. And then, and this is also what we did. The best way to hear a story is by listening to the story, not filling in your own version. Um, but I'm just saying that story. So we decided one time... Well, it was over a process of a couple weeks. We were in eighth grade. We were tying the zip line, or tying, a, we would, we took uh, Chris Massey's parents' um, water ski rope out of the boat, and we decided, okay, well, what if we somehow harness those to the trees? Well, we realized that you couldn't slide down, even though it's a waxy rope, you can't slide down it because it's going to burn your hands. So then... You know, with Discovery Learning, we tried a few things like we were trying to put a rope over top of it and slide down. It kind of worked, but it wasn't quite fast enough for us. Still with me on this? So we went to my dad's hot air balloon, 
Yeah. What's that? How did we find the truth? So I took one of the carabiners from the hot air balloon because we weren't flying it at the time. So what the carabiner did is the carabiner basically held the basket to the envelope, which is the balloon. Okay, there was four of them in all four corners of the basket. So I took the carabiner, and then we took our rope that looked like this, and we looped our rope through the here, like that. And so if you clamp this over the rope, being this is metal and this is waxy rope, and you're holding on to this rope, you could slide pretty quickly. Well, again, I, you guys and girls have heard this. You make up rules because certain people get hurt, and then that's your discovery learning as a child. So we realized, put your feet down and drag them along here, because when you hit the tree, it sucks. We had to discover that because somebody had gone, and boom! And like, hey, I can't breathe because I punched it along. So then we decided, okay, well... After a few days of doing this, we decided we really wanted to move this zip line way up. Because the higher up you go, the more intense it is to jump out of the tree and hold on to the zip line. Y'all ready for this? Good. So, my best friend in the whole world, known Matt since 1974, Matt Owens, gets as high up in the tree as he possibly can with the ropes, all secure. He's ready to go. Okay? We're watching him. So he goes and out. And he swings out. And all of a sudden, let's go. And he's falling. And this is about 38 feet. Oh. Okay? Now, he hits the ground and bounces. <laughs> yeah, you didn't realize that the world is, but this is why he bounced. So he, coming through the air, falling like this, put his right arm down to stop him. He shot his bone right through his hand. His hand was back here. <laughs> then he bounces back up. He also nailed his head on the ground the first time. Then he comes back up and nails his head again. He is out. Is his arm okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get that. I'll get that. So, so, you know, the thing is, you're watching your friend fly through the air, and you're kind of chuckling, going, <laughs> what? 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 So, here's the thing. I, we, it was me, Chris Bansky, Steve Zubansky. I'll get there. We run up to him. I go to check Matt's pulse. I grab his right arm, so I grabbed his bone. Oh. I said, oh, that's broken. <laughs> and, you know, we all kind of stared going, is that a tree branch? No. That's his bone. So, I look back at Matt. Go check his pulse on his other. Not there. Check here. Not there. Check here. Not there. Stop his heart when he hit the ground. So I go into chest compressions. Chris Massey goes into giving him mouth to mouth. And we look at Steve Zubinsky saying, go call the fire department. Right before 1984, Arizona was kind of thinking 911 was this new thing that you could do with the phone, but it hadn't been instituted yet. So Steve goes running off. I'm doing chest compressions on Matt because Matt and Chris is giving him mouth to mouth. He's dead. He died when he hit the ground. Finally, after what seemed like the longest time in the world, you hear the fire truck start. Now, I'm going to tell you that the fire station was from me from here to about the reservoir in a straight shot. I mean, it wasn't far. I swear, that siren went on where he drove all around the Phoenix metropolitan area to every place available other than to us. That's how long it seemed like those sirens going. That's how slowed down life got. 
So I'm giving chest compressions, and then of course, you know, I'm going, Chris is giving him, at the time it was eight compressions, three breaths, eight compressions, three breaths. Why does it change every time? Because someone figured out, oh, this is better. I can tell you that eight compressions, three breaths works. Uh, so things you might not know, if somebody's heart stops, you do push it on their chest and you breathe it for them, doesn't restart their heart. So here comes the firemen. They get out of the truck, and I don't know if you've ever been down at an emergency scene, but the fire department, not only do they drive slow getting there, they get out of their truck, and they're like shining the wheels. Hey, you got a bump. And you're like, dude, get over here. You know, so the guy comes over, and all the things we knew about CPR was, okay, you don't stop until they stop you. So the guy comes, and he goes, I'll take over. So I stand up. Guy comes behind Chris, I'll take over. So they start breathing on him. He's doing chest compressions, checking, chest compression, checking, chest compression, checking. You hear three, two, one, clear. And you know the whole thing where you see a person go <laughs> on TV? Guess what a real person does? <clears throat> Slams back into the ground. Heart's beating again. So I sit there going, dude. So at this time, you got everybody from around. Tempe, Arizona, showing up. Hey, fire truck. I saw a fire truck. And you got the person who wants to tell you about what they had just been doing when they walked, heard a fire truck coming, so they decided to come. So you're listening to neighbors. Yeah, I was washing dishes, and I have a ham in the in the refrigerator, and I was thinking about cooking it tonight, but I wasn't sure. And you're thinking, going, they just shot you, and you're talking about a ham? So we're all sitting there like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. So all of a sudden, you hear... You know, park clear for air back. What's going on? The orange helicopter. Yeah, it was orange in Arizona. It's green here. Came and landed in the field. They rushed Matt down, put him on the helicopter. Boom. Taken to St. Joe's Neurological Unit because of a head injury. Head injury? So I dressed. <laughs> Literally. Now, the toughest thing was we get down to the hospital that night because, you know, that's what you do. And... We didn't have the internet. We didn't have tweet and all that kind of thing. And it was amazing that it was probably about 100 kids and their families that all showed up that night. And at about 9 o'clock, they come out and they said, you know, just go home for the night. There's really nothing that's going to happen. Just we'll let you know. So I get home and uh, go to sleep. But I'm not really sleeping because my best friend, son died. So I'm shocked back to life. Wow, that was intense. So, uh, so we ask, you know, when can we hear something? And Sam and Dolores, Matt's parents, said, we will call as soon as we hear anything. About four o'clock in the morning, the house phone rings because again, this is before cell phones and all those other fun things. So I hear the house phone ring and it rings three times. And at the time that we had one phone in the house, which was down in the kitchen. So I hear my dad kind of walk down the hallway, and my dad is, you know, an ankle cracker. So you hear, you know, his ankle cracking. He answers the phone, and I can just hear him. And, he, you know, my room is down the hall. I can't really hear clear, but I, uh-huh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Dad comes in my room. Says they're taking Matt to emergency surgery right now to remove this large section of the skull to relieve the swelling. They don't think he's going to make it. Wow. So four o'clock to eight o'clock, I'm just wrecked. Everybody else that was there pretty much got the same bone tree of information because we're person to person to person. We're walking into eighth grade, and it's just like. Sit down going, gosh, what happened? Principal comes over to the PA. And, you know, the principal comes over to the PA. It's here, it's a lot of times good information. Sometimes it's because the house blew up. But, the, you know, hey, <laughs> hope that was none of yours. Um, principal comes over to the PA and says, I need your attention. And I have your, you know, good thing where everyone's quiet and everyone knows that Matt Owens just is in crappy care. You know, he's doing horrible. And it's just this long pause. And he goes, I have information 
about Matt Owens. He is awake and he's asking to see his friends. Okay. Four o'clock phone call says he goes into emergency surgery to remove a portion of the skull to relieve the bleeding on his brain. He's not expected to make it. We just saw him four o'clock in the afternoon before bounce and die and shock back to life. So all of a sudden I get a call slip and it's my mom and she says, let's go down to the hospital. So I go walking in and Matt's mom, Dolores, said, Chris, you're not family, but if the nurses ask, your name is David Owens. You're his brother. Okay. So I go walking in, and there's my best friend since I was four years old with his breathing apparatus down his mouth, head completely shaved, huge staples going right across the top of his skull. This big old protruding bruise right in the center of his head. And everything's breathing for him. And he's looking at me and he's like, like what's up, Sheriff? <laughs> <laughs> I walk next to him. He grabs my hand. He's got an IV in his hand. He's got a tube coming out of his side that's dripping into a basin. He's got a cut from here to down to here because they had to do exploratory surgery to make sure that, you know, whatever, and I'll tell you what that was. But the funniest thing was, he's sitting there, and he's got this look of confusion on his face. Not like, what the heck just happened? But he's trying to figure out what was in his mouth, and there was something coming out of his, you know, <laughs> I wanted to know if it was the same thing. <laughs> I said, nah, Matt, it's not attached. <laughs> And he had this look of, <sighs> so I go back out and there's a whole crowd of our eighth grade class that's out there with a whole bunch of people. I was the only one other than Matt's family was able to go in and see him. Doctor comes out and he goes, tells the Owenses, this is what's the deal. And so Matt, Dad, Sam said, this is list of his injuries and this is what we can expect. Compound fracture of his right arm. That was the least of his injuries. So this arm was all splinted up and put back together. Ruptured his spleen. His sternum was cracked because of CPR, which that normally will happen. He cracked his skull from ear to ear over the top of his head. And in fact, his face, his entire face, and we didn't realize this, had completely shifted because of how his skull had cracked. They put it back together, though. He had a huge, probably about a four inch by four inch piece of skull that they had to take out that wasn't in his skull when I was talking to him. They had it in the freezer, and later they would put it back in and it would relieve the pressure. He had six broken ribs, a punctured lung, that's what the tube was, was to drip out anything out of the lung and to reinflate it. And ripped his hearing mechanism in his ear, so he's deaf in his right ear. They didn't think that he would be able to get out of the hospital for a year to three years with full rehab. Matt got out of the hospital in less than two weeks, has had a 100% recovery, other than his ear. No oh. hearing in his right ear. He's a tough dude. He, and I'll tell you what, the guy cheated death like there was no other. I've skied with him. He is still the guy doing the double black diamond shoots through the trees, light speed, no helmet. No big deal. No, seatbelt, no seat belt, why would I wear a seatbelt? So, so pretty tough stuff to deal with as a kid, yeah. I, more else to that story, one, chest compressions will save a life. Whether it's an 8 to 3 ratio, whether it's a 10 to 2 ratio, whether it's a 30, if you go into the rhythm of staying alive, it works. Yo. 
No, that's Chris Massey. So, all right. So, I would like for tonight, and I meant to do this last night, but I didn't. I would like for you all, with the review, to work on problems 12 through, bless you, 12 through 25. And we will cover those completely tomorrow in class. But make sure you have them down. Cool? What'd you think of the story of Matt? He's a legend. That's so, so weird. Was he not wearing his like when he was in mining?